out, you bus whack. Welcome to another episode of Pete and his bus. Um, I've got lots of Rootmaster goodness coming your way in a minute, but first I have to say a huge thank you to all of you that bought a piece of the bus. Um, we've sold loads. In fact, in the beginning we sold so many there was issues with postage and delivery because the volume was just huge. Uh, and I've actually had to make a load more. Obviously out of the same panels, there is a limited number, but there are some left see that I've been working away making more pieces. If you would like to buy one or you've been thinking about buying one, check out the link below the screen. You can go to the website and use the store there. Now, let's get to the action. For those of you that watched the last episode of Pete and Bus, you know that I collected RML 2543 all the way from High Wycombe and drove it back to the barn. But the barn is completely full, so it was stored on another site. I'm now bringing it back because its fate is about to be decided. So I'm back inside RML 2543 and the owner has at long last decided that he does want to sell this bus. So he's asked me to help him out, so I'm gonna clean it up a bit from the outside and the inside, photograph it nicely and stick it on the internet for the world to see. I don't usually use high pressure washers on buses because if they've been painted a very, very long time ago, it'll just take the paint straight off. This bus was painted a while ago, but it was done properly so it can take it. And with the amount of moss that is growing all over it, it was the only way to sort it out. Apart from that, I had to hoover up all the paint that had flaked off of the ceiling upstairs. That's what happens when you don't prep it properly. And now she is ready to be advertised. beautiful RML for sale, who is going to join me in what will be the best purchase of your life? And now back to 2730. For those of you that watched the last episode of Pete and his bus, you'll have seen me refit all the strips and a lot of the window trims. 
It is, however, still very dark in here, and that is because I'm having a little bit more trouble with the lights than I thought. So I'm still working on that behind the scenes, and as soon as I have an update on that, I will let you all know what is going to go in these holes. But whilst I'm in here this time around prepping for paint, I've got to start thinking about what I'm actually going to put in the downstairs area. Most of you will know by now that my first bus, RML2355, was designed and converted as a bar. And the downstairs bar area, which serves to the outside, was completely created to deal with high volume. This involves twin counters, 12 beer taps, 6 fridges, and all the lines are cooled by these huge coolers. But a lot of the time we do events that don't actually need all this over-engineered capacity. So with RML2730, I'm going to scale down the bar element by using different beer taps. These taps run on an ice bank and a compressor, and they do away with the gas bottles, the couplers, and all the cooling system. The entire bar will be positioned on the driver's side of the bus, and the counters on the serving side with the hatches will be collapsible and or removable. And this gives us the capacity to do small to medium events as a bar, or do events that don't involve a bar at all. One thing is for sure though, I still have a lot of work to do, so let's get to it! My first job is to remove all the remaining paint and glue that is still on the side walls. And to do this job, I'm going to re-employ my favorite tool <laughs> called the Whizbanger. side is now done. Um, it's fine, but there's still a lot of glue left at the bottom and that clogs the pads up on my air powered grinder. So that's something to watch out for. I've got to scrape the glue off beforehand as much as I possibly can, which is a bit of a pain. But apart from that, it's just one of those jobs I've just got to get on with and do it. covered in crap in one day isn't enough torture. I'm now going to use a slightly softer bristle, like this one, on the bottom curved aluminium section. It has a motif in it. I want to keep it exactly the way it is. I just want to bring that shine back and get all the grime off. So let's see how that works. takes a minute to get the right tool set up right and for you to hold it right. Um, I thought I was going to use the air powered sander but it didn't actually really work so I ended up using the drill with some bristles and that on the aluminium works a treat. It's my favorite kind of little job because I'm not actually really changing anything I'm just taking what's there and giving it a second lease of life. I love it!
after all that grinding and getting rid of all the dirt at the bottom and stripping away all the leftover bits of Rexine and paint and all that stuff, it is a complete and utter state in here. I am covered in crap and so is the downstairs of the bus. So I'm gonna have a massive clean up and a tidy up and then we're gonna do the next and last phase of this process. This is what happens to strips on the ceiling of a bus that's been exposed to the elements for a long time. Every rivet is in a hole and those holes allow moisture to come through and over time the paint just crumbles away. It's horrible. So all these strips I'm gonna rub back to bare metal. I'll use wire wool and the drill with a, a bristly bit. Uh, but the actual panels up top themselves, the paint is so good, I'm just gonna clean it up then rub it down and they are good to be painted. So I've had a bit of a look and see what works the best. Now, the steel wool is not thorough enough. The drill is very thorough, but it's really difficult to control. So it's just a bit, you know, and I don't want to damage the panels around the strip. But the winner of all the tools today is, I call it the whiz banger, and it's got like a little flappy wheel on it. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. It's got like a little flappy wheel. It turns out the flappy wheel on my whiz banger now there's a sentence I thought I'd never use, is exactly right for this job. The task at hand here isn't actually that long, but there's one thing you guys have got to remember. I am nearly two meters tall, and the ceiling is too low for me to stand up normally, and it's also too high for me to sit down and work it. So this job was a total f pain in the box. In the end, my backbreaking efforts were totally worth it. And once again, it might not look like that much work has happened in here this time on Pete and his bus, but you'll be surprised how long all of this stuff takes. We're also not far from sticking paint on the walls at all. And I've got a feeling by the time that paint goes on there, it'll look and feel exactly right in here. About eight or nine years ago, a much younger looking Pete was looking to buy his first Routemaster bus. And after putting out the feelers nationally and locally, I was made aware very quickly of a bus that had been sat in a field for years in the local area. So I hopped in the car, I drove about half an hour out to a place called Heathfield and I found what is now dubbed the Heathfield Routemaster. I was very naughty because I jumped over the fence and I had a quick look. Um, bit intimidated by it because it was in a right state, uh, but it was intact and a lot of the original bits were still on it. Uh, it was sort of converted for a TV station to do advertising campaigns and it, it had some mural painted on the side of it which is all flaked off. It was a massive project, but I felt I could work with it, if it was cheap perhaps. So I did a little bit more digging when I got back and I got hold of the owners that were car dealers and I phoned them up and I ended up speaking to a member of staff. Now within 30 seconds, I could tell that this guy was probably getting one or two phone calls about this bus per week. <laughs> it's parked right next to a busy road, everybody can see it, they all think they've discovered it, but of course these calls are coming in all the time. And he basically wasn't interested. He said the owner doesn't really want to sell it, it's got sentimental value, blah, 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 blah. In the end, I pushed him for a price and he said, well, if you really desperately want it, it's 20,000 pounds. The problem is, 20,000 pounds back then would buy you a very nice running bus, not a project bus. So I remained polite, I said, thank you very much, I will leave that, and on my merry way, I went. I then went and bought RML2355, and of course, the rest is history. But in the eight years of me now operating various buses and doing all my activities, every now and then I still get sent pictures of that very bus. And every time I get sent a picture, the bus looks slightly more deteriorated. It's still in the same position, but the most recent picture I got sent, I noticed that some absolute moron has decided to smash the windows upstairs and in the cab. And it's at this stage where you really have to start making arrangements to get this thing safe because the water will go in 
all the interior is obviously a write-off and ultimately the structure will be affected. So I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna contact them one more time, but with a slightly different strategy. Whilst trying to get hold of the owner of the bus, I actually coincidentally contacted the owner's son. Now he's a similar age to me and we both share a huge passion for old vehicles and he agrees with me, something has to be done about this bus. So he very, very kindly invited me to the site and showed me around to check out RM843. RM843 still actually has a lot of very desirable original bits on the outside. There is the original indicators, the chrome trim on the front grille, the original rear light setup. So many people are trying to get hold of these bits nowadays. It has an aluminium front roof dome and it's got a really lovely original driver's door even though the glass has been smashed up. But any sort of originality goes right out the window once you step inside this thing. All I can think of is a clown designing a sex den. So that is RM843. She's actually a bit worse than I thought. Obviously I've only seen the odd picture here and there over the last eight years, but having now inspected her up close and seen inside, it is a pretty dire situation. But there is good news. This bus can be saved. And I've had another chat with the owner's son, he's had a chat with his father, and we've all come together and we've decided that they're going to allow Lord Barrington and myself to come down here, bring as many tools and bits of equipment as we possibly can, and see if we can get her to run and drive. Place your bets now. <laughs> it's really exciting because basically that's the first big step. As soon as you get these things moving, the owners will get re-enthused, they'll be all excited about it once again, it'll be able to be moved in a better spot out of the elements, and then perhaps some work can be done, and then they can look to either sell it or do something with it. So we thought we'd help out and kickstart the second life of RM843. However, this is not going to be a case of put some batteries on it and turn the key. Lord Barrington and I are going to have to get really organized if we want to have a realistic go at this. And this, of course, takes time. So it is with regret that I have to leave RM843 in this field for a little bit longer. But don't worry, help is on the way. go lots of exciting things happening on Pete and his bus indeed uh, thank you all so much for watching uh, thank you to all of you that bought some merchandise if you're interested you know where to find it uh, and I cannot wait to get my hands on that bus in that field but all of you will have to wait a little bit longer to watch and see what happens so we'll see you next time on Pete and his bus
God's sake. <laughs>